So let's start with the definition then of what is integrated estate planning. It may very well depend on who you ask, of course. My definition is it's the result of the marriage between traditional estate planning and lifetime asset protection planning. Traditional estate planning tends to focus on what happens when somebody dies. Uh, it's a bit of a narrow focus. Should it be, or is it that in all cases? No, but it is a bit of a narrow focus that focuses on what happens when somebody says goodbye. Um, the lifetime side of the asset of the uh, integrated estate plan to me is making sure that we have an estate at death time, so we have an estate to which that fancy estate plan can apply to. So the result of the marriage between traditional estate planning and lifetime asset protection planning. So I speak in terms of then the lifetime asset protection component of integrated estate planning as being the process of organizing one's assets and affairs in advance so as to preserve the estate in view of risks to which the estate is subject. We have the box below. IEPT stands for Integrated Estate Planning Trust. Again, we're integrating the lifetime asset protection component with the death time typical traditional estate plan. And I'm illustrating around the box that these sorts of strategies that we're talking about and then the issues we're talking about in terms of staying on the right side of the law can apply to really just about every type of asset. Obvious things like stocks, bonds, liquid assets, real estate, etc. Perhaps things too that don't quite come to mind so readily such as interest in a business, life insurance proceeds, uh, jewelry, art, antiques. Couple of key things in the definition here. So process of organizing one's assets and affairs in advance. Who wants to help out here? In advance of what? In advance of you getting your retainer check? In advance of, what did you say, I'm sorry? Taxable events. In advance of taxable events. Well, I'll take a minute and do a sidebar here, thank you. I'm skipping ahead just a little bit, but Typically, this sort of planning, at least as done for Americans, is tax neutral. And I will develop that for you a little bit farther into my speech. So I myself am not too concerned about taxable events for the typical American client. Now that may be uninteresting to many of you if you have a tax practice, but as you've seen from other sessions, you might be needing to think about where that tax practice is going in today's environment. So what, what we have been doing out of my office for 25 years out of little old Denver, Colorado, is simply tax neutral planning designed to, I should say income tax neutral planning, designed to protect assets during life, and then upon death incorporate all the gift and estate tax things we normally can do. So in advance of, not to belabor the point, but in advance of, notice that something's going on from the litigation standpoint, because it's in the client's interest and it's in your interest as an advisor to avoid anything that has to do with this concept of fraudulent transfers or assisting with making fraudulent transfers. In other words, the client really needs to do this planning at a point in time when probably the client is least inclined to do it, which is when the seas are calm. Just like fire insurance, it has to be taken out before there's the fire, before the matches struck before somebody even comes across the matches or knows that there's going to be somehow a fire. It needs to be done as a preventative measure. Let's call it a vaccine, not a cure. If somebody's been bitten by the bug already, it might be too late to do any planning. Or at least it'll be too late to do as much planning as the client would like to do. There may still be things you can do, but probably not as much as the client would like to do. So in advance to be developed, so as to preserve the estate in view of risks to which the assets are subject. Most Americans approach this from the standpoint of the biggest risk they're concerned with is the litigation risk, which is probably no news to you. Um, people in other countries might be motivated by other issues or concerns, political strife, social unrest, the local economy, things of this nature. For the typical American, it's going to be the litigation risk. So we've talked about what this is. 
equally important to talk about what this is not. As you can see up here, it's written, it must be true. It's not an excuse to evade or even avoid income taxes. Now, we know that tax avoidance is legal, although in today's environment, one would still wonder. Uh, we know that evasion is not legal. So clients will be confused if we're talking with them about going offshore, if we're talking with them about going to places like the Cook Islands, for asset protection purposes, many will immediately jump to the thought or idea that, well, there must be a tax benefit here. And one way to get on the wrong side of the law is to sell it as a tax benefit and implement it as a tax benefit for you know, reasons that we've talked about throughout this, this conference so far for a day and a half. So how can we go offshore and make sure that we're not doing this as some form of tax evasion? Well, what's the cure for preventing or what's the vaccine for preventing tax evasion? Yes. We have a volunteer at the back. She says, pay your taxes. Disclose and pay your taxes. And in particular with a structure like this, I'm going to talk to you about how when we have a trust that's settled by an American resident or citizen that's offshore, Number one, it can still be a domestic trust for tax purposes. Number two, it'll still be a grantor trust for tax purposes. And number three, it can be funded with, I like the B word, a billion dollars. Right, offshore isn't what it used to be. A billion's not what it used to be, but still. Fund it with a billion dollars and pay absolutely no gift tax. But you say, wait a minute, uh, Engel, you said that, well, no. We're not going to have to pay a gift tax. It'll still be in the estate when the individual dies later. Now, if the client wants to get it out of the estate for estate tax purposes, we can still do that. Yes, that's a different type of planning. No particular tricks involved, just normal old estate planning focusing on lifetime transfers and that sort of a thing. But we can fund it without regard to, let's put it in context, you're telling the client, the good news is I can protect your $50 million estate. The bad news is you're going to have to pay a transfer tax of $20 million while you're alive. How many clients would you